Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about Pretty Little Liars Original Sin Season 1 Episodes 1 and 2. So, I had no idea that HBO Max uploaded the first two episodes on YouTube. They did that three days ago. So when I went to YouTube and I put in like HBO Max, I can't find it nowhere on their page. But then when I clicked off and went back again, it just popped up recommended. So simply just like, you know, um, go to YouTube and put in like, you know, Pretty Little Lies Original Sins um, episodes one and two and it'll come up. Now they show the first three episodes on HBO Max. They're, um, the way that you have to view this is kind of interesting. They're dropping episodes like flies. The first week, there's three episodes. Then the next two weeks, there's two episodes each. And then the fourth week, there's three episodes. My question is, why are they dropping all the episodes so fast? Um, is it because they fear people might not like it or what? Like, I don't know. Um, so like before this even aired, I told myself plain and simple, go into this, like not comparing it to the original. It's going to be hard not to do that, but you have to do it. Like you have to view this thing as its own separate entity. Like you have to, that was one of the problems with the charmed reboot is that everybody kept comparing it to the original cause they kept trying to be like the original in the first season. Now I am like everybody else. I still think it's way too soon for a reboot. Actually it's not even a reboot. Um, originally this was a reboot, but now they're saying it's within the universe of the original series. There are talks that the original cast members might pop into this show at some point in time. Um, how do I feel about that? Keep it separate. Do not combine these two. I would prefer if this was a reboot. I would prefer if it had a different title and its own thing. Um, but it is what it is. I was also shocked to see that I, Marlene King, is the executive producer of this show. Now. As you know, she is the creator of the old TV show, the original one. Now, executive producers, I explained this many videos ago. They pay a certain amount of money to get it produced, but they also get to make decisions on what happened in the show. And that's a good possibility. She is not a true executive producer. Now she can still give her input and that's probably what she's doing in a consultant kind of way. She might say, okay, I might want it to have like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but that's probably it. This is all that Riverdale guys um, um, project. And it's all him. <laughs> you can tell just by watching the, the first two episodes is all him. If you've ever watched Riverdale and you ever watch The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I don't suspect I Marlene King is like pulling the shots like a lot because she shaded this show before it even came on and she's been very quiet on social media and hasn't said a word about this show so she's probably still niff it got taken away from her now i do believe like everybody else this should be on like on tv instead of hbo max because a lot of people just want this on freeform like the original was on um abc family and later freeform but you know, the WB owned the rights to it, which is kind of odd because ABC Family is a ABC network show, but, but it was always made from the Warner Brother people and stuff. So that's why it's now on HBO Max. Because it is on HBO Max, they want to go there. They want to up the ante because they're trying to be different than the original series. Um... And that reeks of desperation. It really does. And I don't trust that dude, uh, Roberto. Um, I, I, I can't remember his middle and last name, but I don't trust him with like, you know, streaming services pushing the envelope because we saw that with the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. And yeah. So here's the thing. This is very much a slasher, right? And 
there are some deaths in here, but the deaths are really lame. I'll get to that in a little bit later. I haven't even, I haven't even given you my thoughts of what I think about the show yet. Uh, I'll do that a little bit later. Once I get through with this, I just want to explain a little bit more. Um, the deaths are pretty lame for these first two episodes. Now, some people online have said you have to get past the first two or three episodes and things really start to cook. I hope to God it does because a lot of people seem to really like this. Now, it's people who've actually seen this are saying good things about it. Some people are like, you know, they don't know. And other people refuse to see it because of the original. <laughs> and so um, they, they, they cuss a lot in this, which I appreciate that. I like the cussing. Because, you know, it's kind of hard not to be a show like this without cussing. Um, I like how everybody's actually dressed like a teen. That's a problem I have with the original one. The original one, nobody dressed like a teenager. They dressed like adults. That were supermodels. Another thing I appreciate is, like, one thing that bugged me about the original was that A was always a red herring. You always assume A was doing this and doing that on the show, but it was really one of the other characters. And that always bugged me. Uh, so at least this A is upfront about stuff, you know what I'm saying? But like I said before, this is very much a slasher. Um, it's even directed in like old school 80s slasher movie styles. I, I don't... God, my neighbors are being loud. I hope their voice ain't getting picked up on this. I don't like that. The whole 80s slasher feel. Um, only because 80s slasher movies are like done. They're over with. They're new age horror movies, slasher movies. And they should try to focus on double style. So it's just kind of like, why are you going back to the 80s? Why is every show trying to go back to this 80s feel? Stranger Things. Um, and if they're not doing the 80s thing, they have an 80s music. I remember Death Note on Netflix did that, the live action one and stuff. I'm like, why do you keep going back to the 80s for? And so it's set in two different time periods. But in the first episode, first two, you really get everything in the modern day. Um, you get a couple of flashbacks to that of uh, the 90s, actually. They're trying way too hard to scare people. You know, in horror movies, when it cuts to a scene, like a flashback, it's like, eek. <clears throat> like that they do that way too much in this show way too much and they're trying to be scared Roberto cannot do horror I'm sorry he just can't there's a lot of things he can't do <laughs> and horror is one of those I never felt scared I never felt like oh my god what's gonna happen next you know what I'm saying I never felt that and his little jump scares are pretty lame and this is on the streaming site and you know how like you have like a horror or slasher movie the first installment and it's good and then the second installment if it has a completely different cast it's straight to dvd this is how this show feels it feels like it's straight to dvd y you can tell it's very influenced by riverdale and chilling adventures of sabrina it has that chilling of sabrina uh adventures of sabrina with the atmosphere, the locations, the buildings, the rooms. It has very much that look combined with that of Riverdale, but more so Riverdale. But it doesn't have the, the, the corny dialogue of Riverdale and it doesn't have the corny supernatural stuff that they later goofed to show up with like that. Thank God. So basically think of this as a watered down version of Riverdale and Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. And so that's basically what this show is like. Now, I've seen my fair share of slasher TV shows. The best one of them all is one that's actually named Slasher. It's a Canadian show. It's extremely good, except for that fourth season. That is the best one. The second best one, in my opinion, that I have seen is Scream Queens. That was just awesome. The next best one, even though it wasn't that great, was Scream. And then the garbage dumpster fire was, I know what you did last summer. <laughs> and so, like, you know, then you have this show and everything. And I don't feel scared. It's weird seeing all these 80 movie references and camera angles and certain shots and, thing and music and stuff. It's... 
It's odd, but I do appreciate they are trying to be different from the original. If they would have been straight up like the original, I would have been like, okay, you're just not original and stuff. Now, I would have done this show completely different on my own. Like, I would never have done it the way he did it. Um, and I'll explain why in a little bit. Now, as for the characters, right off from the bat, in the first episode, I am not connecting with nobody. And I mean nobody. Um, the first episode really didn't even catch me all that engaged. You know what's crazy? Is the original Pretty Little Lies felt more scarier than this show. <laughs> this show just tries too hard. That's the problem. Um, Because A, in the original one was this person in a hoodie who snuck around, crept around, gave these haunting type messages, and kept freaking them out on a psychological level. Here is just desperation. It's just feel desperate. Um, the new A... <sighs> They really got to explain why this grown person is after a bunch of teenage girls. That don't make no sense right there. If I was doing this, I would have this version of A go after the parents because the parents are very much involved in this series. It all revolves around what happened to them in the 90s and stuff. So why in the world is this person going after the kids? That just makes no sense. Um, now with Roberto trying to be more edgy and different, I don't appreciate it. He has learned a lot from Riverdale and he is still making the same mistakes from Riverdale. Um, one thing he has approved on is representation and diversity. He always had a problem with that. Even though his shows were diverse, even people on his own show that was diverse complain that he doesn't know what the world he's doing. <laughs> um, like the person who played Topaz and Riverdale, she's all like, you know, I guess I'm just like a black Latino lesbian character who's just there to be a stereotype and there to make out with some like girl who's white and do absolutely nothing but follow her around like a puppy and stuff. I'm paraphrasing here. And so she had a huge problem with him and she let him know on Twitter. Also, the Pussycat Dolls actresses, they let him know, or, or the fans also let them know that, yo, they're in the show and you're not doing nothing with us. And then he wrote them out and it's just like he has a problem with diversity. He doesn't know what to do with black characters. And this is even in The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. But at least he made Jazz, um, that um, character, like very interesting towards like um, the middle and end. But like when it came to um, Theo and stuff, the transgender character, apparently the person who plays that character is all like, he just wanted to rush that storyline and all this other crap. And you know, the actress was like, no, you have to take your time, but this is a very sensitive matter. And so he, and he's gay himself, but he's trying to like rush things. And, but he is learning from that. Where he's not learning is underage and older people stuff. Yes, once again, we got that crap. We have the older age people and we have the younger age people kind of like smushing. Another thing he's not learning is like, look, these are teenagers on the show. Not, not, not in real life. They're adults playing teenagers. So the characters are teenagers. Why in the world is a bunch of adult viewers going to watch a bunch of teenagers either walk around naked or have sex or be half naked or hook up with an older person? Why? Once again, is he doing this crap? He did that so much in Riverdale and he did it a little bit in Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Teenagers should not have orgies in Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, ran lingerie and underwear. We don't need to see a, a bunch of shirtless guys in Riverdale. We don't need to see Betty wearing her bondage dominatrix outfit and all this other crap. And he's doing that yet again because he has he must have a weird fetish or something. It has to be something because this is in every show he makes. Every show he makes is always about teenagers. They're always half naked or naked and they're always doing things they should not be doing. My God, the main character of this show is a, uh, a pregnant teenager. What kind of role model is that? 
I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? And in this episode, there's a bunch of boys in the locker room and we see naked man booty. Why do I need to see naked teenage booty? Why? Why, 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 why? And this is something that's been happening a lot in modern television. It's always naked man booty. And then when it comes to the girl about to get naked, oh, then the camera suddenly cuts off and everything. And it's like, why do I need to see that? Why? Why do I need to see an adult get smushed by a teenager? Why? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is this man's weird fetish with that crap? And people have called him out on it when it comes to Riverdale. And he has not learned his lesson yet. So, let's get into this actual show. So, the actual show is kind of bizarre and weird in a way. So, it starts off in the 90s, right? They're at their prom type thing. And some girl's running through, tomorrow, look at me, look at me, something happened to her. I don't know what happened to her. We don't know yet what happened. Her friends don't want to pay attention to her. She climbs on this um, scaffolding thing. She's like, oh, you're looking at me now? And then she drops to her death. My problem with the dropping to the death. They don't show it. This is supposed to be on HBO Max. It's supposed to be more edgy. You can show naked man booty, but you can't show a girl die. Like, she literally, as soon as she jumps, it cuts to another scene. To everybody go, <gasps> You know what I'm saying? And then, so, then we see her just laying on the ground and blood's coming out. And it's kind of like, you couldn't show that. Like, you couldn't show that. You know what I'm saying? And this is supposed to be more edgy. So then, um, actually, you know what? Let me get into the intro first. The intro is very much different from the original one. I like it and I kind of don't. Like I said before, A is not playing around. A, you let, A is letting us know, yo, I'm going for these girls. You know what I'm saying? He's poking their eyes out. He's cutting their pictures in half. He's burning them. He's doing all kinds of stuff. Oh, he or she, it looks, I'm just assuming it's the heat. A's look is very Buffalo Bill. He's sewing, I'm just going to call him a he for now. He's sewing up like a mask and everything. He's doing the creepy thing. We hear the original theme song. I got mixed feelings about that. One, I love the original theme song. Two, um, I love that it's played in a different beat. Now, I've already heard the original theme song years ago, and I heard the different version, and the different version is what we're getting now. So the different version fits with this because it's more a creepier show. But I would have preferred that they would have used different music only because this is so much different. Uh, this is all about sinning and everything like that and your original sins. And so it's kind of like... I would have preferred Demi Lovato's that, um, what is that song? Something with the devil. Uh, I dance with the devil and now I'm in trouble. Something like that. I would have preferred like a song like that. You know what I'm saying? But creepier, you know what I'm saying? But this does fit in there. Now, what's odd about this is that the intro is actually on YouTube and it's different. At first we see A just doing all the crazy killer stuff on the pictures. And then towards the very end, a couple of last seconds of the intro, we hear the theme song. That felt odd, so they changed it now. Thank God, now you hear the music at the very start. So let's get back to the show. So the girl dies, it cuts to that. We see um, Energen. Now, here's all the girls in the show from left to right of the picture. It is Noah, it is Farron, it is Energen, it is Mouse, and it is Tabby. So, anyway, we see Energen and everything, right? She's the pregnant girl. She's with her mom. I remember the mom, Carla Pope, man, from Popular, a show in the WB. I recorded the audio for that show. I got to make the pictures. I can't wait to talk about it. But anyways, it was a show of head of its time. <laughs> so, they're talking, and in comes Karen. Karen is basically a Karen. <laughs> That's why they called her that. Um, she's being a little nice and everything, and a little mean at the same reason. We don't know why. They go upstairs. Some strange noise happened. They go to like the hall. We see some water stuff on the floor. Don't know if it's water or blood. And it's that scene from the trailer. They open the bathroom door. It's the mom. She's laying in the tub. She slit her wrist. She's dead. And it's an A symbol. Why did she do this? Because she got a note on the door with a flyer from the old prom thing from the 90s. Now, here's the question. 
did she slit her wrist or did a do it we don't know but either way we could not hear nothing as um this was going on and so it has to be a because a left a message and everything or maybe it's the mom letting everybody else know hey this is a so it cuts from that and now it's energy a month later she's living with her best friend tabby Tabby is a girl who loves movies. She's in the movie club and everything like that. She works at a movie theater. She is the Randy of this show, just completely watered down. Like she's Randy, but she's not Randy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, she's more like his niece from the screen 2002, screen five, um, 2022. Yeah, so anyway. She's more like that character, but straight and everything. And so her and Energen are like really good friends. And as they're walking to school, they realize something. They've been best friends for so many years, but they never knew that their moms were best friends. Her, their moms were the one at prom and they was friends with the girl who jumped and everything. How do they not know that? How does that not come up in conversation? And so in a way, she meets Karen, the girl who we saw earlier, and Karen's now being a butthole to her and everything. And it's like, why all of a sudden? And oh, it's because um, she accuses, what's the name of kissing her boyfriend and stuff. So basically, we meet some of the other characters um, later on. We meet Mouse, and Karen is being rude to Mouse, homophobic-wise, because Mouse is, like, closeted, and she's all like, we all know, and blah, blah, stuff like that. And so, at some other point in time, we meet the other girl. Mouse kind of talks to her a little bit, so they're kind of friends. Um, the other girl is Noah, and I would not know that if I didn't look it up online. <laughs> And so Noah has an ankle monitor on her. Why? Because she's a bad girl. <laughs> Apparently, Mouse and Noah, they kind of know each other, kind of friends. Their moms know each other. Their moms know the other two girls' mom. Why? Because of the 90s. And yet nobody knows that. And then we meet the last girl. We meet Farron. And Farron just does ballet. And Roberto is still gross because the, her, her, her ballet outfit is extremely tight and her booty is extremely big. And they make sure they focus on that as she's spinning around and everything. Because he has a weird fetish when it comes to like weird crap like that. Um, he's always showing it in his shows and stuff. Like, seriously, Archie takes off his shirt way too much. <laughs> in Riverdale so anyway um we have Karen she's being rude to Farron because Farron wants to be the black swan in the little recital thing she's all like oh you only got the part because you're black <laughs> and everything she's racist by the way she's racist she's racist homophobic entitled she's a Karen <laughs> but Karen has a twin sister named Kelly supposedly Kelly is just as bad as what's the name but we don't know how yet now what's interesting is before I watched this show I watched the interviews from all the girls all the girls said they are fans of the original shows I feel bad for them because this show is nothing like their sh um the original show and so the girl who's playing the twins she playing both characters she says she acts different she talks different she walks different we can't tell because the other twin isn't on screen that much and stuff and so um um i forget if what's her name no so fair anyway so anyway she did some stuff back in the day she's trying to get out of that she has to go to community service and when she goes to community service um there's a cop being a butthead and so the thing about A in this, A is constantly stalking them. And he actually makes himself known to the girls. He's constantly staring from a far away distance in a creepy kind of Michael Myers kind of way. And they just stare at him all scared, like kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like, what is that? Then they turn their head, turn back, and he's gone. And so, um, so she's creeped out by that. And she's going to go tell the cop. Well, the cop is getting blown by a teenage boy who's doing the community service thing along with Noah. 
that cop just ha happens to be Karen and Kelly's dad. And he's married. And their dad is mean. Extremely mean. The wife is scared of him. The kids are scared of him and everything. And so um, Karen is being extremely rude to Energen and everything and all this other crap. And like I said before, she's pregnant and stuff. And then, you know, we see Mouse, whose real name is Minnie. <laughs> What's up with these names in the show, boy? She's shy. Like, this is what's weird about the show. You get to know who all the characters are with their personalities, right? But none of them seem interesting. The only one who seems a little interesting is that of uh, Tabby. But Tabby's a little bad girl and everything. See the job she works at. It's at the movie theater. And she talks to the boss who's in college or was in college. And he talked to some people in college and she wants to get into certain classes and stuff. Now she's an advocate. Her film teacher who's in high school, she thinks he's racist because all the movies he wants them to watch are all white and directed by white people. And she's all like, there's not a single person of color who directed these movies, stuff like that. So they doing like a lot of awareness stuff, LGBT stuff and black stuff and people of color, but they're kind of in your face about it. And it's not really flowing, but I'm, I am glad they are making that aware and stuff, but it's just in your face modern time, you know? One thing that was good about the original is that they did in a very subtle way that went with the story and stuff. So anyways, she also has a friend who works at a movie theater with her. Now her friend goes to school with her. Now, she allows the boss to drive her home. He stops in the woods. I'm assuming she's gonna freak out. Nope, she's okay with being in the woods. She doesn't ask, hey, what are we doing here? So that lets you know something's going on with them or they're just really good friends and she trusts him. He tries to kiss her. She kind of turns her head, doesn't want to kiss him. And then she sees a standing in the trees and she's like, need to go now. And the dude's like, well, what is, who is this person? We need to help? She's like, no, I've seen too many movies and it's not gonna end well. And so I don't know if she's using him just to get into a better school or not, because sometimes it kind of seems that way. But he is a creepy older dude who's going after a teenager and stuff. Now, one thing about her that makes no sense is we see her take a spy camera out the boys' locker room. All the boys are completely butt. When I say they butt naked, you see butt. Like, you see butt. And we're like, why? Why is she doing that? I have no idea why she's doing that. They don't explain why she's doing that. So we have to find out in the later episodes. And also, why am I looking at naked man butt? Um, ugh, I'm so sick of that in modern day television, man. So, Mouse, she makes the friends with another supposed gay dude and everything. He wants her to go to like their um, coming out club and everything. I don't know if he's really gay. He kind of seems like he's a little into her. I just don't know, you know? And so she makes friends with him. And then with Farron, the ballerina girl, there's a dude who's a ballerina. He keeps hitting on her, but and she keeps talking about, oh, he's a good one. He's straight. He doesn't sound straight. He doesn't act straight, even though he keeps trying to kiss her and stuff. I think he's closeted. If he's not closeted, then the actor is something because he doesn't seem straight. <laughs> <laughs> so only time will tell <laughs> and so like um what is it um at some point in time some bad stuff starts happening to karen so my oh not no way before i get in that the when I say A keeps creeping around, A keeps creeping around the school. The janitor sees him like, hey man, what are you doing? So he chases him. He can't find him. It's the intense part, the creepy part, but it's not it's not feeling creepy because Roberto can't do horror and stuff. And then it, it don't make no sense because the chilling adventures of Sabrina comic is very sadistic and everything. The show, not so much. Um and so and he picks up a box cutter, slashes his throat. Now they show it. They show the blood coming from the throat. They show it getting slashed. It's CGI blood. I am not a fan of CGI blood. Also, what made this so lame? After he slashed the throat, 
and it goes and cuts from the outside and you see the doors you hear him hollering and screaming but we don't get to see it so it's like of course he's getting stabbed over and over we don't get to see it and what happens to the body lord if i know because nobody finds it in the first two episodes so then mouse uh, no no then karen finds a dismembered mouse in her bag it's blood in there then Karen finds razor blades in her ballerina shoes and cuts her feet. Then um, somebody scratched out the eyes of her poster for Homecoming Queen because Energen says she's going to run and beat her and everything like that. And oh, Farron failed her P test and there's like drugs in there and stuff and she doesn't know how so while all girl get the attention guess what now they're talking to one another and this is where they bond and become friends right so finally they get to meet each other and then after this moment they're all like it must have been karen she did this to herself to frame us and everything they're like we're gonna get her back they all like energy looks into the camera she's all like we're gonna kill karen I'm like, kill Karen. Isn't that a little extreme? Um, Roberto, where are you going with this? <laughs> like, they want to get her back, but why kill? Well, they're not really going to kill her. They're just going to embarrass her, right? And so after this bonding moment, this is what's weird. They never talk once another to the point where they, about their parents. They don't know that all their parents know each other. This one don't make no sense. So you have a group of girls in the 90s. They're all best friends. Their best friend dies. 20 something years later, um, the, 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 the A killer wants to do bad stuff to all of the mother's daughters instead of the mothers. And they all, all the mothers just happen to have daughters and not one son. <laughs> it's too much of a coincidence, man. And they don't even know that their parents know each other. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh boy. And so like um, so they all like, you know, how are we gonna get back? How are we gonna get back? And blah blah blah, stuff like that, right? Well, we find out why Energen um is uh, well why Karen doesn't like Energen and stuff. We see the flashback of the party. Um Karen's a little drunk, and then so Energen goes in the bathroom, talks to Karen's boyfriend. He keeps walking up to her in a creepy way. It cuts from that. We don't know what the world happened. Then in comes Kelly, the twin sister. And she's all, she tells Karen, hey, what's the name made out with your boyfriend? She confronts her. He refuses to tell the truth. That's why she hates him. Also, Farron's boyfriend um, is somebody Karen liked before, but then Farron got with him or some crap like that. Now, one thing about... Tabby that doesn't make no sense. Remember, I said she had a friend that works at the uh, place. Um, she says he's her gay best friend, but straight. What does that mean? <laughs> now, when it comes to all the girls, they're watered down copycats of the original ones. See, Energen is um, Aria. Let's see. Um, Tabby, I believe, is what's her name? Spencer. Noah is um, who's Ashley Benjamin? Hannah. Um, this is what's so bad. <laughs> Mouse, the Asian lesbian, is Emily, the Asian lesbian. Now, come on, Roberto, man. What the world was that about? <laughs> and of course um ally is karen <sighs> and they basically water down versions of them and tabby's friend who straight and likes her and stuff he's basically lucas and stuff i mean come on man this is just too much on the nose and uh all this crap so anyway Energen, she's all like, all right, I got a video, a video of Karen. It's going to rock her world and everything. We don't know what's on the video. They won't show us yet. And they're all like, how did you get this? And they're like, nobody can be that drunk. She's all, and then, so she tells them, you know, something happened at the party and she got the phone. So she's pretending to be nice to Karen, right? 
and she's all like, I'm only about to go to like this movie thing, this and that. Tabby edited the video to make it look worse than what it is. So everybody's there. Karen is there, Kelly's there, everybody's there. It's Karen. She's drunk off her behind, making fun of her boyfriend who made out with energy. And talking about how he has a baby penis and he only lasts 15 seconds. And the guy who's recording it is like, you want to see mine? Want to see mine? Let me see yours first. So as soon as she's been the flash, it cuts from that. She's embarrassed. She runs out. The energy is kind of all like, you know, maybe we went too far and everything. And, you know, so now she's feeling bad about herself and, you know, stuff like that. So Kelly um, texts her and everything. But before she texts her, A has finally decided to text our liars and everything. And he sends them videos of everything he did to Kelly, the razor blades, the mouths, the, um, the, the drugs and the urine and stuff like that. And it's just kind of like, I don't know, man, you know, it's like, and he's sending them these weird messages, but it's just kind of like, eh, you know, whatever. So anyway, Karen's all like, I know it's you. It was only could be you because of what happened that night. Karen don't remember. Karen was so drunk that Energen came in. The guy was trying to get with her or whatever. And um, she grabbed the phone and then she grabbed Karen and gave her to Kelly so she can get the safety and all this other crap. Karen denies sending them the messages and doing all this other stuff. But then Kelly and Karen have a plan. The plan is that she's going to withdraw from homecoming queen and they're going to pull a carry where they dump pig's blood on her, but it's going to be paint. So energy is going to win by default. And so, um, but there's only one problem. Noah can't go because of the ankle monitor. Well, she blackmails, um, Karen's dad after he was being rude talking about I know you the type of person who can keep your mouth shut because he doesn't want her to know that he's getting blanked by teenage boys while he's a married man so she's all like well I need a favor for you so now she can go now while they're getting ready they're bonding like they've known each other their, all their lives and they literally just met anyway so they're at prom and all like I'm gonna tell the truth and everything and about the video and she feels bad so she's looking for Karen and blah, blah, blah. Now we see Kelly uh, is pretending to be Karen to the principal and all this stuff. Kelly really is just as bad as like Karen and stuff. She's the one who organized this whole Carrie moment and stuff. So then as the whole thing is getting like away and we see Energy and Fan get her crown, she can see, well, they can all see Karen above and Karen's just looking at them smiling, getting ready to, to dump the paint on them. But A is behind Karen and pushes her and it cuts. We don't see her fall. We don't see her die. It's basically a retelling of what happened in the beginning and the blood is showing. And then now all of a sudden, all the girl getting text messages at the same time. And it's from A. And, you know, it's all like one liar down and like the rest to go. And you tell anybody I'm coming for you. Well, he's coming for them anyways. And I'm just kind of like, I don't know, man. It's just, it just seems Desperate. It's interesting in some aspects, right? And in other aspects, it just seems like a watered down version of a slasher movie and stuff. And it's just kind of like the original Pretty Little Liars was a whole lot scarier than this, man. Like it really was. <laughs> and that's embarrassing to say. <laughs> and stuff. It's like, see, the thing about the original one is that it hooked me on episode one. It was supposed to be basically uh, Desperate Housewives, and they even admitted it and stuff, and they found the books and got the rights and stuff like that. And so, you know, but this just seems very desperate. I don't need to see naked men in, um, in this. I don't need to see nobody getting raped, because apparently that's gonna happen because they put up a warning on Facebook and a little story says something about their graphic this and that. I'm just like, why do you need to show that to be edgy? You don't. At least show somebody getting killed to being edgy, you know? Um every room like every time you go somewhere at night it has this filter a red kind of 
muted filter and every room looks the same all the rooms are kind of dressed the same like all the girls bedrooms kind of look identical in there i think and it's just kind of like ah and since that filter is on 24 7 it takes away from the realism and it just kind of feels muted and it makes you depressed a little bit you know now as for the girls um let's count karen in there too so six six of the actresses okay three of the actresses can act no four four of the actresses can act and the other two can't <laughs> so they need to practice and stuff and so like yeah you have like six main actresses only four can act and the other two can't and so like you know they don't show the moms that much in the first two episodes. I hear the moms are going to be shown a lot more, but like really who knows, you know, maybe it is in the third episode or something. I haven't seen that third episode. I really don't even know what the world happens in that third episode. Um, is this a banger? No, it could be. Depending on everything, it really could be. But they got to explain the main thing. Why is this adult after the teenage girls for? And they did nothing. The parents did something. And why isn't the killer going after the parents? Um, too many of these characters are unlikable. Like the recurring cast. They're all unlikable people and stuff, you know. Um, why? And then the main characters. Why was Tabby spying on the boys for? You know, um, who got Energen pregnant? Like, who? Because she said, because there was a, a talk about abortion in here. After her mom died and this other stuff, she's all kind of like, you know, she don't know what she's going to do with the baby. She's six months pregnant. She wants to have an abortion. And she can't because it's six months in and stuff. And so this is before the whole Roe versus Wade thing. And so, like, she has to have it. And then so she don't know what she's going to do because she's going to be a burden on this family she's staying with. But it's kind of like, why is she staying with friends? Does she have no other relatives or something? Also, this doesn't make no sense with the whole Karen thing. So her and Karen was friends in the past before she got pregnant. Then Karen got mad at her. But then years later, became friends with her. Six months or five months later, became friends with her then only for a month later to stop being friends with her like what the world man that's so inconsistent and stuff you know and it's just it's just so odd and it's just so weird and stuff like like i said there are some interesting things with this but it just it, it seems they're trying too hard they're really trying too hard mouse is not a interesting character whatsoever um noah is kind of an interesting character, but she's a generic character. Farron is just there. She just does ballet. That's all we knew about her. Because, like, it, it focuses more on Energen, Karen, um, and Tabby. So, so far for now, Farron, like, once I said again, he has not learned from his diversity problem. Because Farron is a blank slate who just does ballet and stuff. And talks very preppy. Um... Noah, like I said before, is just generic. Um, Tabby is interesting. Energen is kind of interesting. Um, but why is she pretty? Like, why is that a role model? Um, and it's just like there's so many uninteresting characters. Like, I'm not vibing with nobody. In the original one, the moment, the moment, all of the lives were on screen. And we learned their backstories in the first episode. You was engaged with all of them. All of them was very interesting and stuff. Here is just like, who cares? <laughs> so it's not a terrible series by no means, but it's not a great series either. It's just borderline okay. Like it's something to watch, but you don't really know why you're watching it. And we like they, they really got to ump the ante on this slasher horror film. It's more than just filming it like a slasher movie. You got to have slasher elements in there more than what's in there already. And you have to actually show them and stuff. So far, three women or three females have died in this show. And we never see them die, but we see the man die and everything. Like, what kind of crap is that? 
and age just stalks them like like a uh, idiot standing there. Like the original A was just so much like menacing and clever and, and and mysterious. It had a mysterious element to it. This does not. Alrighty, well I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.